You are listening to the Derek Asante Podcast, the show that brings you insightful conversations about everyday topics. We just aim to keep the discussion above the average. Our guests are the ones bringing the social proof to the conversation. Let's get into it. I'm your host. I'm your host. And we are here. <laughs> hey, listen. Is Derek Asante, and I'm back with another episode. And this one I'm actually really excited about because I think it's going to set the tone and it's also going to rub some people the wrong way. And um, but on the flip side, I think it's also going to get people to start looking at things um, differently. It's also going to get people to start reflecting um, on who they are and how they view the world around them and so forth. Now, this is the first episode that's dropping on YouTube for the pod. So I want to thank you all. I want to salute my followers. I want to salute my supporters, folks who tune in on the, you know, on the audio side, <clears throat> whatever platform you're using. I want to thank you for continuing to support me on that. And without further ado, let's go into it. Now, on this episode, I want to talk about something we all experience something we all have something we all tap into and what it does to us how it impacts us and that is our feelings when we get all up in our feelings about things right that's what i want to talk about so where do i begin It's kind of tough because, pardon me, it's kind of tough because majority of the time, we don't even know we're doing this. We are not even aware that we're doing this. That's what makes it very challenging, right? Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, again, thank you. If you're listening, stay close. I don't know how long this one's going to be, but I think it's going to be worth it. I'm here to challenge you. I'm going to throw some things at you that um, some of it is new to me uh, because I have to dive into it and actually express and, and explore some of this stuff. So I'm hoping that it does the same for you and that it shifts the way you look at things a little bit. Um, so let me start from here because majority of our decisions stem from our feelings, Right. And if you really think about it, our feelings are what evoke a lot of our reactions pretty much to everything that's happening around us, right? Or, or with us. So think about that. Whatever happens around you or with you is literally due to because of your feelings, right? And <clears throat> this stays back. I mean, to centuries, okay? It dates way back. Pardon me. So it goes as far back as the whole yin and yang situation. Right? Every time you hear that theory or that statement, you need to be aware that one thing affects another. And this is what I'm talking about. Our feelings impact our reactions to things that are happening around us, right? So let's give a a quick backstory of of the term yin and yang. So so that we have a baseline, I guess, right? I want to kind of start us off with a baseline, a foundation to establish for this conversation and and so that we are all on the same page and so that we don't go off track and so that I, I hold myself accountable so that I don't go off track. Okay. So yin symbolizes, you know, stillness, um, a softness, a quiet, right. A, a contraction and, and deep thought contemplation. Okay. But, I guess I can summarize it and say it's a, it's kind of like uh, meditating. 
Ian has always been synonymous with a feminine energy. Just so we're clear though, right? All living beings have both masculine and feminine energy. It's just a matter of when one shows up, right? Things like um, the ocean, a cool a temperament that is cool or dark um, temperatures, right? The shade, the moon, right? And, and even winter are associated with the yin, right? So I hope that helps, right? I'm just trying to give you a visual aid to, to, to understand or a framework for you to kind of make sure you stay on top of this, this conversation that I'm going to have with you. And the yang symbolizes movement, right? The expansion, um, action, it symbolizes growth, uh, heat. And so keep that in mind. So we have stillness, then we have, you know, movement, action. So we need to have balance. When something happens, you can be still about it or you can take action, right? And these are things that we do on a regular basis. So keeping that in the back of your mind, what does this mean? Um, yin, we know stillness, is calmness. It's almost like a meditative state, deep thought processing, right? It's a slow reaction to things. Uh, then you have the yang where it's just like, boom, we're taking it. We're going, we're taking it by the horn. We're doing it. We're reacting. And if you really pay attention to that, where we talk about the feminine energy and the masculine energy, men are people of action. We don't dwell on things too much. We like to do. Women like to process. They're all deep within themselves and, you know, trying to think and feel things out. Um, Indecisive, <laughs> if you really want to um, throw it out there, right? But they're less likely to decide than men, right? We are more like, you know what, let's do it. We'll think about it later, right? Or when the consequences present itself, we'll address it then. So yang is synonymous with the masculine energy and it represents the sun, all right? It's light expansiveness and at times it can even be you know reckless right but if you really frame it out it's risk-taking it's being more assertive um it's action-oriented discipline is required objectivity logic right and very analytical but not to the point of becoming stagnant right it's also a form of confidence and survival. So now we understand what the yin is and what the yang is. So now I can kind of continue where I want to take this conversation with you guys, right? We all have both, right? And the key is to keep them in balance. Because if you don't, then literally chaos is imminent, right? If, if any one of these two out of, is, is out of balance, right? So if one is dominant, and the other isn't, you're going to have a form of chaos, right? Some sort of instability, and that's going to cost you. Depends on what it is that you're working towards, whatever your goals are, what your aspirations are, it's going to cost you. But these are things that we need to be aware of. Um, it's a constant struggle, though. I say it because. It needs to be said. It it's also gives us clarity. It's easier said than it is accomplished, right? It's the yin and the yang is a constant battle between the good and the evil, the right and the wrong, love and hate. Like these are things that we as people, we, we struggle with, we battle with on a regular basis, right? The emotions that we choose to display will always showcase, right, the side of the struggle that we're currently standing on. So for example, I might be trying to figure out, do I like this person or do I not like this person? But when they walk into that room, my behavior, my body language, my actions is going to let them know if they're, you know, if they're a good steward of paying attention to body language and things like that, then they would know right away that there's a vibe there that I'm not, you know, clicking with them. Something is an aura that I'm naturally going to give off. 
And it's going to be whether it's good or bad. And that person is going to feel that. And that's without me using words. And that's what's crazy about it, right? That's without me using words at all. And so that's the power of the yin and yang because it displays itself sometimes and we aren't even aware. Or subconsciously, we're just doing it. We're not even processing. Whoa, like what's happening here, right? So as long as we're aware of that, I think I think we're in a good space to kind of continue because think about it. <clears throat> When you give off that vibe, the other person may sense it or a third party might sense it. But the point here is within each individual, we have that struggle, right? I think knowing that and being aware of that is, is key. So, um, but I want to talk about feelings and how, I guess, they present themselves and the impact that they have on our interactions with others, right? And with, with ourselves. Now, in order for me to push this conversation forward, let me ask you this. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself this question? How do I decide whether something is good or bad? Just in general, have you ever stopped to ask? And until recently, I'd never stopped to ask myself that. And I'm pretty sure you haven't. Because it's not a thing that we do. It's not a thing that we stop and say, hey, I wonder how I came to, <laughs> to make this decision, right? I wonder how I decided what went through this process. We don't, right? Now, if everything is comprised of yin and yang, then it also means that some good and bad, you know, things happen. And how do we determine, you know, this for ourselves? Like, how do we decide, do I like this album that I'm listening to or I don't like this artist? What goes into that? What influences that decision, right? But the one thing that we must always consider when we're making a decision about something, we have to factor in the circumstance, right? The circumstance itself. What's happening that's pushing me to have to decide? What caused that thing to happen where I'm now having a reaction to it? Did the artist, I'm using the, the, the album or the music as an example, because did the artist that I'm judging now, did they say something in an interview or um, in a song, or did they share their view on something, a subject matter that I either experienced or I have an issue with? But the real question is where and how did I come to the, the, the situation, the conclusion that I have an issue with this? And that's really where I'm trying to go with this, right? How would you determine, right? I'm going to give you some examples here and then you can kind of process it on your own, right? But think about the circumstance with every scenario that I'm going to share with you. And I'll break it down a little bit more so it makes a little bit more sense for you guys, right? So check this out. How would you determine if the following um, are good or bad. A union in a work environment. A marriage, right? How do you determine if it's good or bad? A chocolate bar. How do you determine if that's good or bad? Alcohol. How do you determine if that's good or bad? A job, a mortgage, or even being unemployed, right? So the idea or, or the circumstance of unemployment, how do you know if it's good or bad? Depends on your situation or the circumstance and how it relates to you. So any one of these or a few of them might be your reality, right? Or not. But however, you need to, you need like two things. And these are critical. These things are critical in order to address the question, right? Because remember, the question is, how do you know which one, whether one of these things that I listed are good or bad? That's what you need to figure out. That's the question we're asking. And what I'm telling you is the two things that you're going to need to be able to process this. For example, the first one's going to be the specific circumstance or the situation that we're speaking about. Okay? That's the first thing you need to know. You need to know what is this situation that I'm talking about or that I have to make a decision about. 
in terms of whether it's good or bad. The second thing I need to be concerned about is what is my measuring stick? Because we, we need something to measure, right? Or determine what it is and how does it impact me now? How did it impact me in the past? And how will it impact me in the future moving forward? But regardless, I need a measuring stick. I need something to measure it with. I need to compare it to. And how do I do that? What is that thing? Okay. But those two things you need. You need to know what the situation is specifically because every situation is unique. Right. And for example, no two job places, no two um, work environments are equal. The only thing that's going to be generic is that we have people that work in that space. And that's it. Right. People show up to work in that space and they get paid when they leave that space or when their time, you know, that they put in is is up and they get paid for it. They get compensated for it. But that's about it. No two people are alike. No two scenarios or experiences can be the same. And so that's why it's important to be more specific. And then you have to look at what am I comparing it to? Because I get paid just like the other person gets paid. But do I have a mortgage or does that person own their home? That changes our circumstances. It also changes a lot of things about the job that we're doing. You get what I'm saying? So we need a measuring stick. So we're going to use a job as an example, okay? Let's break it down a little bit. Besides, many of you can relate to a job, so I think it just makes sense for me to use it, right? Uh, either you're employed now or you have worked at some point in your, your life. And so that's why I think it's a, it's a nice little, um, I guess, consensus for me to use. So a few things. We must consider a few things uh, before taking the job, right? So let's say you applied for a job. You have to consider a few things before you even accept a job. Like, how much does it pay? How far is my commute to work? What is traffic like? And does it have any benefits? Is this a full-time opportunity or is it a part-time opportunity? Or possibly, is it just seasonal? All these things are going to have an impact, right? And they're specific. So which one of these am I going to address? Like, which one is it applies to me and how do I react to these things, right? We have to also cons consider a few things, whether we're going to get along with our coworkers. Am I going to like them? Are they going to like me? Am I going to get along with my supervisors? Uh, do I like my managers? And overall, the company, how, you know, how does the employer treat its employees in the workplace? Me as a person looking for a job or in a job, these are things that I process. I would have to process because they impact me. They're going to have an impact on me, my family, and anybody who's connected to me. So that's why it's important. So I got to look at these things. Now, all the specifics of the circumstance must be processed in order for it to be considered an instance. The problem is that all the details really mean nothing until you identify a measuring stick. Hmm. That's crazy. A standard to measure or evaluate with, right? So we need something. Check this out. As human beings, our opinions on a particular experience varies from time to time. Person to person, location to location. So with that in mind, we have to process things thoroughly before we come to a conclusion, but that's not the case. We jump to the conclusion without even considering, you know, the consequences, the ramifications of, of what may come, right? So I'm going to continue to look at the job example. What would it look like from the perspective of the business owner? This is something that we never consider because the employee is always looking at themselves and, oh, my employer should do this and my employer should do that. But just for a moment, if you were a business owner, what would it look like to look at things from your vantage point? Employees have a hard time seeing that because they don't have that mindset or they've never experienced or probably never will experience 
the the turmoils of being a business owner. Now, I'm going to push forward a little bit. I don't want to get stuck over there, but what would it also look like from the employee's perspective, which is common. A lot of us know this because we are employees. Um, but what would it look like from a seasonal worker's perspective? Someone who's not there on a regular basis, they're only there for a short period of time. And what would it look like for you know the part-time worker or the full-time worker? Right, The part-time may have some benefits or no benefits. The full-time may have all the benefits, but then they're paying into union dues and they, they might complain about the union dues, but they never have a vantage point of what it looks like for the part-time worker or the seasonal worker. You get what I'm saying? And they, they, they would never understand why uh, a business owner wouldn't give the same packages to everyone as long as they're working under that umbrella of a company. It's all perspective. It's all understanding. The specifics matter. But the question is, who does it matter to? That's the point. When it matters to you, then that's all you care about. Right? Um, one more thing. Let's, let's keep pushing this job thing. What would it look like from someone who is not even employed and is in search of employment? So when the employed person complains about a union or complains about the fact that, you know, uh, this light bulb hasn't got replaced or, um, you know, this thing, equipment could be better or the scheduling could be better and, and so forth. What about the person who's looking for a job? You think any of those things would matter to them? You see what I'm saying? Now, the third party that often isn't considered in this scenario is the customer. What does the customer think of the employer? And what does the customer think of the employee of that establishment? Are they happy? Do they complain? Why do they complain? Oh, wait, we, we don't care. We don't care because we are not them. Is that what it is? The problem is, and will never be the event or the circumstance. It's never what happens. The thing only matters. Hear me out. Only matters as it relates to the effects, right? I mean, it matters only to the person that it really impacts, right? And then how we make our conclusions and decisions from that. So if I walk into a, an establishment as a customer and I'm getting a bit of an, a negative energy from the, the person serving me across the counter, I'm going to have a conclusion that I'm going to form about the establishment first and then about the employee that I had encountered. Right? And guess what? It's not the thing that happened. It's my feelings that triggered me to have this conclusion that I'm drawn to. Okay? It's something that we have to understand here, right? That meaning and significance are just synonyms. They mean the same thing, right? There are really no differences here. We decide, how, we decide how important a job or something is based on the reaction or the response displayed by a specific person, right? <laughs> when they experience that job or that thing. So... You're going to tell me you don't like so-and-so because of what they said to you or about you based on their tone or such and such. But I don't know that person. So that information is irrelevant to me. I didn't have that experience. So that experience, that, that, that information is irrelevant to me. However, if you repeat it enough times, guess what? Vicariously, you're going to transfer that to me. I'm going to in interpret that and, and process it as though it's my feelings, my experience. I now take on your experience and make it my own, but it's not. Because I actually hadn't gone through it. I haven't gone through it. You know, so the significance come from who experienced that, that moment, right? So, but I say all that to say that nothing is significant. It is only significant to that specific individual, okay? And that's important for us to know.
Okay. Right. So that's very important for us to know. And we need to recognize that um, <clears throat> a lot of us forge our conclusions <clears throat> about things, whether they're good or bad, whether they're true or false, whether they're memorable or not, based on how, you know, a specific circumstance that took place affected us as individuals and our situation in that moment. Okay. So another example I'll give you is if your workplace went on a strike today, right? The only thing it'll show is where you stand as far as your personal bias towards unions or employers. And how are you going to show that? Right? Whether you show up to pick it or you don't. Is that simple? You see what I'm saying? So you show up. The minute you showed up, then that means you know you drew the line in the sand. Like you know which side you're standing on. And if you don't show up, all those people who showed up know exactly where you stand. Now we have a divide. <laughs> right? So through our actions and how this impacts us, and guess what? I'm going to show up because I know I need the money to pay my bills, to take care of my family, for example, right? And the other person might not show up because they feel like, no, it's wrong. They're going to protest and be like, nah, I'm not going there. I'm not showing up because this is where, what, I, what, what I believe. And so because you believe that, those who show up might look at you differently. But again, the impact level differs from person to person, right? Circumstance to circumstance. Location to location. So this is why it's important to recognize that. I want to use the, the chocolate bar as an example now. Right? It's a good thing when you're hungry. So if I'm starving and that's the only thing that's available to me, it's a good thing. Right? But it would be considered a bad thing if you're somebody or, you know, if I'm trying to lose weight. You see what I'm saying? So we have different vantage points based on what it is that we're looking at. And this is, this is the key thing. We need to be aware of this. Now, a lot of us spend time trying to convince other people to come on our side of the line and so forth. But you have to consider the fact that the impact of this thing differs from person to person. So as much as I might want you to be on my side to support me, I have to recognize that your reaction can and may be different from mine just because of how this thing, you know, the situation is going to impact you, right? So you may not be able to stand beside me because it impacts you more, you know, greatly than it would me. And so that's why I might come to this conclusion and decide for myself, you know what, mm, not for me, right? So be aware of other people's situations. Yours cannot be theirs. Right. And people don't make evaluations or assessments and decisions based on, you know, intelligence or logics. It's really based on, you know, how they respond to the facts and how it impacts their feelings. Right. How these facts are triggering their feelings. And that's what they're going to react based off of. Right. So if somebody's hungry and they, they can't seem to find any food somewhere else. They're going to settle for what it is they can get. The fact is that they're hungry. The other fact is that they can't seem to get food where they're standing. But across the street is where you're standing and you're eating your tacos. <laughs> Guess what? These are the facts. You are across the street. You are eating tacos and they are hungry. They can't seem to find food anywhere else. And you're the only person in sight with food. Guess where they're going to walk towards? You. They're coming towards you. Right? So we need to understand the impact of these facts in our environments will prompt and trigger feelings and reactions. All right? Next thing I want to throw at you. So the new question is this. Just so we can kind of move forward. What is a fact? I kind of alluded to it, but what is a fact, right? A lot of people try to debate using what they call facts to support their position 
Um, but I question if people even have any idea what a fact is quite often because, well, guess what? Today's the day I'm going to try to break it down for you. It's really that simple. A fact is merely information that the, I guess, the interpretation of is agreed upon by a larger population. So that means if there are 30 people in a room and, you know, there's a party happening, let's say, and there's a punch and, you know, 28 people in that 30 say, you know what, the punch is not that strong. There's barely any alcohol in it. You'll get, you're going to be all right. The other two in that room are outnumbered, right? So even though they drank it and they're like, ooh, there's too much alcohol in it, but the other 28 believe there isn't enough. Guess what? It doesn't matter what the other two think. And that's where the facts come in, right? So the 28 determined that the fact in that scenario was their alcohol level was little, even though that was not true for the other two people, right? Now it's being considered a fact because the larger population deemed it that way. Right. They said this was the truth. So just a bit of a sidebar. I guess if you tie in history, whoever told the story, or whoever said the narrative about any particular groups. Right. That became the fact when people argue about historic, you know, um, moments and, and things like that of that nature or even sports. They're using numbers that other people deemed, you know, to be the truth. A larger population said Yes, this is the truth. This person is the goat. This person is the that. And that's what made it factual. But you still have individuals who say otherwise, right? So just to move on from that, now you understand what a fact is, right? Popular opinion is basically a fact. It's flawed. <laughs> Very flawed. But hey, this is how humans function. So the most of what we have deemed and continue to deem factual, right? Most of what we have already said as facts and continue to say it's a fact is because more people agreed, right? To that narrative, right? During that specific time and, you know, moment in time. So it doesn't make it all facts true. I mean, all facts can't be true, but it is something worth considering and processing as you, you know, get into debates or conversations with people who are trying to throw facts at you, right? So this is something that you might want to share with them and say, hey, I got a new perspective on what a fact is. I didn't know this before, but now I know. So check it out. And that's why you send them to the pod. <laughs> you see what I did there? All right. All right. Um, but let's move forward. Another question for you. Uh, this one I want us to process because it's it's pretty Interesting, and it's tied back to what we opened the show with. What is a feeling? Right? Um, and this is critical, right, for us to understand because it's where we as people fall short when, when it comes to communicating with another person. This is a part of our lives that gave birth to the entire theory of the whole Venus versus Mars thing. Okay? A feeling is this. I'm going to tell you. Right. It's literally a private interpretation of information. So my own interpretation of a specific information, piece of information. Right. And this is a person's response. Right. To their universe as they see it. That's it. How I interpret what's happening around me. My response to that is how I see it. Right. It has nothing to do with intellect or logic, but the subjective awareness of repetition or regularity of the inner tensions that we deal with, right? So expressing ourselves through reactions and so forth. So we need to, I think, recognize that our behaviors don't literally stand still. They shift, constantly moving, right? We know about atoms. I'm not going to go into that, but... They either confirm, right, an agreement or it denies you of something, right? This is our behaviors. 
So they either confirm an agreement or denies us, right? You know, our, our actions, right? It either is going to move us forward or it's going to keep us stagnant or move us backwards. This is literally our actions, right? A lot of people take, make actions every day, but where does it place you after that, right? When you think about feelings, when you say, oh, I feel this way, I feel like, I feel like, where does that propel you? Does it keep you where you are? Does it allow you to move forward? Or does it actually bring you back to where you didn't want to be in the first place? Right? But these are things we don't spend time on. And I think they're very critical that we need to start spending more time on because you take that away. What are we? Okay. But all reactions, feelings, right, fall into one of two categories. And I said it earlier. It's either something is good or something is bad. Either you like something or you dislike it. Okay? And facts solely exist independently outside of people. Okay? Outside of people. However, they have meaning and significance only as we as people, right? Only as we have feelings about them. Okay, so you need to think about that. Facts have meaning or significance only based on how we feel about them and how we react to them. So the sooner we can grasp that, I think the better off we're going to be. I'm, I'm well aware, right, that there's a lot to digest in this episode so far. I'm very much aware of that. And that some people might need a second listen to truly comprehend everything that I'm saying here because it is a lot. It took me a while for me to even get into that mindset and actually absorb this stuff um, as I discovered it. Um, I spent a lot of time reading different things and, and learning from different people and so that I can share some of that stuff with you. Okay? So with that said, though, if you made it this far, then you're doing great. Thank you. And keep it up. Okay? Uh, if you haven't already done so, I need you to smash that like button, um, subscribe, just so I can give you more content like this and, and more, okay? So let's keep it going. Here's another example I want you to process for me. Let's say there was a flood, right, in a community. So there's a big flood and it damaged several homes in that community, right? Now, this scenario I just gave you is a fact. As long as you learned about it somewhere, meaning you read it, someone told you, you saw it, right? It's a fact. It happened. I'm not telling you that because it didn't happen. I'm not making it up. Let's say it did happen, right? So that makes it a fact. Now, the same flood damages your home. And all the other expensive things that you might have, furniture, items, you know, jewelry, whatever it is that you have, electronics. And suddenly it takes on a true meaning and significance for you on a personal level. And it's directly impacted you. Okay. Now, remember I said before, don't forget that significance begins with the individual in a form of feeling. How do you feel now? See, when you read about it, when it was happening somewhere else, it didn't have the same significance to you. Oh, I feel bad for those people. But now that it's in your house, your property's damaged, it's different now, right? The level of significance is through the roof, okay? And now it's impacting you as an individual in a form of feeling, you're devastated. You're thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to replace all this? What's this going to cost me? The financial burden, all of that. That's where the feelings come in. Right? Now, you don't like floods. 
when it didn't happen to you, you were okay with it. You just felt, you know, a little bit of empathy. But now that it's you that's going through it, it's clearly a difference, different level, right? So this is what I'm talking about. The feelings have an impact and that's how we react now. Am I going to get through this? Am I going to make it? This is where we fall victim, right? And moving forward. We, we're, sometimes we're not able to, right? Sometimes we don't have a, a, a vision for what's next, right? Because we're stuck. And that's what I'm talking about. Um, but recognize this as we're processing this. Things don't have feelings, right? Um, my cup it doesn't have feelings, all right? My mouse doesn't have feelings. My mic doesn't have feelings. Events also don't have feelings. That means the flood didn't know that it was going to damage all your expensive stuff, so it wasn't going to turn around and go somewhere else, right? Um, places don't have feelings. You know who has feelings? Guessed it. <laughs> you and I. People. People have feelings, right? It's also important to note that things, events, and places can create feelings in us. They can also trigger a wide range of individual reactions within us, right? So full circle, our feelings inform us about what is wrong and what is right. The flood was not so bad until it happened to us. It's so bad. But the significance of how bad it was, or it can be, was not really registering with us until it happens to us, right? These very feelings, right, share another label called intuition. Take a person's feelings away. Like, just, just picture that. If I removed all your feelings, what would you be? What would you be? Right? You'd be reduced to the abilities of a vegetable. Like you would become a veggie. You can choose which one you want to be. But if I took away your feelings, you wouldn't function. You wouldn't even, you know, be mobile. Be non-existent in this, you know, ecosystem that we, we partake in, right? So before making your next decision, check which side of the line you want to be standing after the fact. Right? After the fact, pun intended, right? We know what facts are. So when a fact happens to you, you need to be able to understand which side of this I'm going to be standing. Is it going to be the good? Is it going to be the bad? Or will it be the true side, right? Based on your feelings and how you interpret that fact and how you react to that fact of that significant circumstance, you're going to fall on one of those sides. Okay. And that's, what's important here. So I want to leave you with this final question before I wrap this episode up. How are you feeling right now? Give your answer in the comment section, right? If you're listening to this, um, on Podbean, leave your, your response and your thoughts in the comments, please don't forget to subscribe, follow, like. It doesn't cost you anything. It really doesn't, right? But it helps me a great deal. Now, thank you for tuning in, and I'll have another episode for you next week. Make sure you follow the show on Podbean as well. Download and share the podcast. Until next episode, love, peace, and happiness. <laughs>